right now on Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. Few would argue that we are now living in a new world. When I interviewed PMH Atwater back in January of this year, she cautioned us all, your life will turn on a dime. But what does this new world really denote? Where are we heading from here? I had a chat with Reverend Michael J. Carter, well known for his writings on UFOs and religion, as well as his frequent appearances on the History Channel's Ancient Aliens. Reverend Carter shared with us some of the larger implications of this unique time that we're living in. Much of what comes out of this for you has to do with your own interpretation of what these times are really all about. Is this doomsday or Armageddon? Or have we entered a period of ascension and positive transformation? Or can both of these scenarios coexist in this new world structure? Let's hear what Reverend Michael Carter had to say. Michael, what a delight to have you on Higher Journeys for the very first time. As you know, we've had this conversation planned for quite some time now, and with with most of my guests, where the show is scheduled well in advance, we typically have a subject focus that we'll agree on at the time, as was the case with you. But as they say, and what I've been saying a lot lately, when people plan, God laughs. (laughs) So I've just about given up the act of planning these days because nothing about these days is business as usual. So I will say, as I always do in prayer before each show, dear God, let this conversation go where it needs to go for the highest good of all involved. And so with that, my friend, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I was looking forward to it. Well, as was I, and I'm just glad it's finally here. (laughs) Well, listen, I was recently perusing a book that you'd written, I think back in 2014, the same year I published my first book. Your book is called A New World, If You Can Take It, God, Extraterrestrials, and the Evolution of Human Consciousness. Now, Michael, as soon as I saw the title of this book, I said, this is what I'd like this conversation to be about, A New World, If You Can Take Mm. It, right? Well, here we are. Yes. (laughs) Here we are, like it or not, in a new world right now. And we at this juncture have no idea where this new world is going to take us. Even without reading your book as yet, and I'm I'm planning on it, I have a funny feeling that there were and are some things that you said in that book that directly pertain to what's happening on this planet right now. Am I correct? Yeah, and and as we as we talked earlier, I got that from uh, um, the day after Roswell, Lieutenant Colonel Corso, when he was talking about his exchange with one of the star beings and uh, the star being they went back and forth and, and and basically when Corso said why should I let you escape and the being says and you know, he says what are you offering he says a new world if you can take it mm-hmm. um, yeah I, 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 I think in some ways we do know where it will take us if we decide what we want it to be I'm talking about individually and collectively. Now, I know that collectively we're not responsible. We can't change other people's behavior. People evolve as they evolve. But I think, though, as long as we're doing our part, uh, whatever that may be, everybody has their own you know, idea of what their mission is or what they're here to do, we can have a say in where we want to take it. I mean, even now in the middle of COVID-19, you know, there are a lot of people that are gleaning lessons or reflecting or or reevaluating. Granted, there's always going to be some people who aren't, but there's some people who are are, are responding to this as opposed to reacting to it. And I think that's really, Mm. that's what changing consciousness is all about responding rather than reacting. Well, yeah. we talked about reflection uh, offline a minute ago. And I, I want to point out that in the introduction of your great book, you talk about periodically revisiting the past as a necessary tool to take into the future. So yes. let me ask you this. I want to jump right into this. What about our past, humanity's past? What do you think, Michael, brought us to this critical point or, that we're seeing play out right now? Do you feel that at some very perhaps deeply unconscious level, we had something to do with putting this reality in our present moment. 
Yes, I, I think we do. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that because they think it's kind of woo woo. And, and I'm always careful, too, because, you know, you, you know, there's some truth, for instance, that you are uh, responsible for your health. And so but I don't want to say if someone has cancer or whatever that you gave yourself cancer, but there may have been things you could have done to alleviate it or deal because stress causes these things. Mm -hmm. Back to your original query. Yeah, um, there's an old saying, right? If you want to keep on getting what you get and keep on doing what you're doing. And, you know, we have, you know, here in this country around issues of race and class and gender, um, collectively, we have believed in the myth of separation, that somehow I am different from you. Somehow your destiny is not tied up with my destiny. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so there's b belief in the myth of separation. Now, hopefully, as we go into this new age of Aquarius, if we survive it, <laughs> uh, we have the opportunity to realize, and this virus is showing that, that what happens to you affects me. And what happens to me, my actions have consequences, right? This is what we want to teach our children, uh, that, that what you do sends out a vibration and a ripple effect. It comes back around. And so... The belief in separation has brought us here, that this illusion that I got to get mine because it's not enough to go around. There's not enough mm, love, not right. enough money, not enough you name it. And so we have now we see where that myth, well, um, that illusion can take us. Mm -hmm. It seems like these times are both illuminating that that idea of of. Uh, you know, there's not enough, you know, look at how people are reacting. We won't mention the toilet paper. Well, I guess we just mentioned the toilet paper. Yeah, can't not yes. mention it these days. But what it, it I guess what I want to say is what's being illuminated is both the the issues with that feeling of lack and limit, as well as exposing if we so desire how much there is to go around, including love. I don't want to be woo, -woo but it's true. No, but, it's, you know, it's, I don't think it's woo woo at all. Right, right. So it's 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 some, somewhat of a paradoxical existence. It is. It is. <laughs> Life has a sense of irony, Absolutely. and uh, um, it also has a sense of humor. So, yes. uh, I, I I I think that 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 belief in lack, that belief in scarcity, you know, we're taught that. You know, you come out of your mother's womb, and you were taught that there's not enough to go around. I mean, yeah. as you get older. And, you know, you go get your job and go get your money and go get what you need to do and make sure you got this because and, and just, you know, to get it, get it before they get it. And watch out. Did they get it? Did they take yours? Look out. Mm -hmm. Get it. It's not enough. You know, that that kind of neuroses and it plays out. Um, and, and so and, and, and uh, we're, we're taught that uh, uh, governments and leaders manipulate that because it's easier to uh, lead people, manipulate people when they're afraid. Mm -hmm. And so the trick is not to not be afraid because courage is not not being afraid. It's moving on despite your fear, but not let fear have the last word, as Howard Thurman says, right? The contradictions of life are not final. We're getting ready. I'm not a Christian, but we're getting ready to celebrate uh, th this Holy Week and this holiday uh, you know, I grew up in African-American tradition and Easter time. They would always say the preacher, you know, Good Friday comes before Easter. Mm -hmm. You got to go through that 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 pain. You got to go through that to come out on the other side. I think people can learn through joy as well as pain, but collectively we seem to have to something has to go terribly wrong before we kind of get it. Seems, it seems, doesn't it? Yeah. And then sure. when it goes away, we go back to the old ways, but um I think that uh it is going to be a new world if we can take it, if we can take the sacrifice it's going to take. You know, as James Baldwin used to say, America uh, wants to be what they say they want to be, but they don't want to pray. They're not willing to pay the price of the ticket. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why he and left so, America. The price isn't of it? the ticket. Yeah. And so <laughs> are we willing to pay the price of the ticket in mm. order to be the people we say we want to be, be the nation we say we want to be? Well, I think the operative word, Michael, is we, because I, I think you and I were talking about this as well offline in terms of we think of this proverbial shift and, you know, Dolores Cannon called it also a new world or a new earth. Uh, will we collectively all make it? 
And this is another hard pill to swallow, but this idea that maybe not everyone is going to uh, inhabit this new world for whatever reason, whether that's literal or figurative sense or maybe both. Yeah. What, What are your thoughts? No, I agree. I mean, there's some souls checking out already. Um, And obviously, this is all subjective. But people, I believe to a degree, people choose when they, maybe when it's not even conscious when they have to leave. Some people are checking out already. Um, But uh, yeah, you know, it's the paradox. It's, It's again, there are some people who will leave and there are some people who will stay. There are some people who will use this time of quarantine and isolation and go deeper spiritually. There are some people who will live in fear and act out. Now, it doesn't make them bad people, but it does show you, you know, human evolution is slow. There are 8 billion people on the planet, 350 million in the United States. So to get angry because everybody's not acting the way I should think they act, Mm -hmm. that's a recipe for disaster, right? That's how the Buddhist said what suffering is about, to be attached. I I can I, I'm only responsible for me in the sense of how I respond. Absolutely. But I'm not um I'm not uh, narcissistic is too strong a word but I could use it. I'm not so self-absorbed that I'm blown away because everybody's not reacting to the crisis the same way as I am. Mm-hmm. And and that way I keep my inner peace. People are right. going to do what they're going to do. We talk about empathy and compassion being key, and now more than ever, it is. As we, it's a very good point that you bring up, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that are angry, not unlike before, with opinions about whatever, and getting angry because you don't agree with their opinion. Well, it's probably the same thing right now. You don't see this the way I see it, but we, for for those of us that understand this, need to need to know that all things are relative to the circumstances. Think of the individuals that just have never been in an environment, Michael, where they would be having a conversation like you and I are having. How could Mm -hmm. we be angry at them because they're responding differently? They're responding in accordance with the life they're used to living. They can't not, right? Yes, yes, yes. And I understand it because I was there. And sometimes I go back there. So I, I want to be clear. I'm not making a value judgment, but you, you know, changing consciousness is not about you don't make those same mistakes. It's that you're aware of when you're making them. Mm. And so mm-hmm. I can find myself getting upset because uh, the president isn't acting the way I think he should act or uh, certain constituencies or what anything, even in my relationships, mm-hmm. you know, and I have to say, wait a minute. People are not here. They're not going to react the way I think all the time. That's right. And that's got to be okay. That's got to be all okay. All I need to do is be responsible about the way I'm carrying myself. Right. Oh, I so agree with you. And I believe in the butterfly effect as well. There are other mechanisms universe has put in place to ensure that as long as we walk our walk, everyone else that's supposed to get it or be magnetized to it will. And for those that yeah. aren't perfectly fine. Absolutely. Let me ask yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say yeah, it's it's hard, but you know, it's that you you know, you kind of you don't want to take other people's inventory, you know? I love that. Beautifully said. All right. Well, speaking of people and their interp- interpretation of what's going on. I mean, it's fascinating. And yet not surprising to listen to how people are interpreting these times we're living in, depending on their personal belief systems. Mm -hmm. As an example, you know, for many New Agers, they feel like, you know, we're living in a period of the great shift or ascension. Mm -hmm. Uh, For the conspiracy folks, many feel that this is the big one, the big one, right? The cabal has been waiting to unleash on humanity for years, total global takeover, centralization of power, currency, etc. And then there are those that are aligned, as an example, uh, with the Christian faith. Yes. And many, and I just spoke with a, a dear friend of mine who just wanted to check in and see how he was doing. And he came back and said, this is revelation, the apocalypse, end of days. Though, <laughs> you know better than I, that the origin of the word apocalypse simply means to uncover or reveal. Mm-hmm. Here's what I want to ask you, Michael. So the, here, I, I think I just presented three interpretations of what yeah. this is all about. Yeah. But maybe it's all of the above. That's what I was going to say. All of well, the it, above. it is all of the above, depending on your mindset, right? Because we're creating our reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, and this is just not, this is just quantum physics. And so, um, and there is truth in all of those perce- those perspectives because it will be the end of the world for pe- for as we know it for that way. 
mm-hmm. for that for that mindset, for that Weltanschauung, if you will. So if I'm the Christian, yeah, this is the end of days because it's the end of the way I'm used to the world being. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're a new ager, which I don't really like that term, but (laughs) but, you know, then you're thinking of a new trend, the age of Aquarius, a new uh, uh, this. There's going to if we survive, there's going to be this change in consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it will. But but see what people are forgetting is that for every ending, it's a new beginning. That's right. Life is a circle. I was just going to say a cycle. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's a circle and a cycle. And so, but if you're used to linear thinking that we're heading, 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 and then it stops, it can be a very frightening time. Mm-hmm. Um, so all, all, all three of those perspectives can be true. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting how us humans are just we're just masters of interpretation, right? I say that there's really just one fundamental truth with myriad interpretations, including, let's talk about how how people look at the beings, you know, uh, depending on where you are and what you grew up with, they're they're either aliens. I heard you say somewhere you don't like that word, nor do I. I don't like ET either, by the way. I like non-human intelligence, but nonetheless, I digress. You know, depending on your background, a a non-human entity will be looked at as an angel from the Christian faith, from something else, or, or you know, the or jinn, demon, or, or a demon. demon, or that's correct, or a demon. But it's all based on our perception, our worldview. No different here, no difference here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, well, and it's always polarity. Polarity. It's either good or bad. That's right. You're an angel or a demon. Nope. You're it's right all or the wrong. Above. <laughs> You're good or bad. There's no in between. And that's when you think in that dualistic kind of polarized way. And hopefully as we go forth individually and as a species, we'll realize that there's a lot of gray area. I remember the Dalai Lama talking about partly in jest. It was on YouTube. And but, it, you know, about um, what happens if you meet a quote unquote alien being, you know, he's called, they're sentient beings. Mm-hmm. And so he says you treat them with the same dignity and respect that you would expect to be treated. Now, there are underlying circumstances, you're frightened, you're afraid, but depending on where you're, the way you look at life, who was it? Was it Carl Sagan or, I don't know if it was Carl, was it Einstein who said that the most important question you can ask yourself is this, is the universe a friendly place? Mm -hmm. And you better be careful with your answer because if the answer is yes, it's a very different experience Mm. And if you say the universe is unfriendly. Weren't we talking not that long ago? I've talked to so many people in the last uh, several days over all this, but I think it was you where I had said one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare is there is nothing, nothing good is or, good or bad, bad is, thing makes it so. You got it, man. Yes, it was yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a wonderful and, and there's truth to that. I mean I mean, you know, obviously some people would say, Yeah, if I went out and got mugged, that's a bad thing. Right. Yeah, that that's a bad thing. But if you learn something from it, even if it was no more than I could have done something different or maybe I shouldn't have went down that street late at night. I mean, it, it depends on you know, I've 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 met people as a chaplain who said and who have died later on who said that cancer was the best thing that happened to me mm-hmm. because it, it woke me up mm-hmm. to how precious and short life can be Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now someone else will say what cancer was the best thing what are you are you what are you a nut so it's it's just your perspective i think that's one of the hardest things as i think of the challenges of humanity and some of the perennial wisdom that we've been talking about both on the air and off the one thing that I, if it seems like humans are loath to do is entertain the idea that both may be true. It's not this or that, but this and that and, and, and ad infinitum. This is something that I've always somehow intuitively connected with. Even as a kid, I don't even know where, I don't know where the heck it came from, but I did. Maybe because I want it all. <laughs> Maybe because I want this and that. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it did start that way. I wanted it all as a kid, right? But then you graduate, which is a a misnomer, into the state of polarity and bifurcation. And, uh, And yet it seems like universe is always trying to show us it's infinite. It's all of it. We're the only ones that distill how we interpret it. Anyway. Yeah. And and I think here in the West, we have a, it's, it's more difficult for us because we do think in linear 
ways. We do think uh, dualities. And in the East, uh, looking at, you know, Buddhist thought or Hindu thought, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not so cut and dried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, and I talk about this in my, in my church and, and getting people to try to understand, and even myself, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, there's like the yin-yang thing. There's a little dark in the light and a little light in the dark. And that's natural. That's what life is. It's just how you experience it and how you interpret it. Mm. But it, but it's easier. You take younger souls, right, who are fundamentalist, using religion as a backdrop, okay? And I'm saying younger souls because the more evolved souls kind of got away from that. They've been through that in other lifetimes. Doesn't make them better. Mm. It just makes them, you know, they, they, they may be less evolved in other ways. But anytime you, it's easier to say, especially in scary times like now for some people, follow these rules. These rules will get us through. Because we're not accustomed to dealing with mystery, and I don't know, gray areas, you're not, you know, you know you're like, ooh, I'm not kind of sure. Mm. But if I say this is right and this is wrong, it's just easier. And people are more prone to follow yeah. someone, whoever he or she is, that says, I can do this for you. I'm the only one. This is the right way. These are the rules. And if you just follow these rules. You know, it's just, boy, I don't really have to think about it. They kind of said they got this. I'm going there. Where if someone came out and said, you know, some of this you're going to have to work through. We can work through it together, but I can't tell you. I can't lead you. I can point. But people don't want that, at least at least up until now. That's because the key word. Th- that uh, means you're putting work on me. Yeah. Oh, boy, are you hitting the nail on the head, man. We th- Look, these conversations should be happening all the time, but now more than ever, I feel so intently that the universe, as I have been saying, is handing us an invitation to understand everything that you're talking about and more than understand it intellectually to be it or else. I feel there's this ultimatum we point we may have arrived at. How about you? I think we've brought ourselves to the ultimatum, right? King talked about it that it's either nonviolence or non-existence. Mm-hmm. He said that back in the 60s. This is the point where humankind has come to. Nonviolence or no, you got to find some different ways to settle your differences. Yeah. Violence is unimaginative. I mean, it's just unimaginative. Right. Even the even the words we use. We're at war with this virus. We're at war. That's yes. all we know. We're not at war with a virus. You can't be at war with a virus. I know. Are yes. you kidding me? But but that's all we know. That's I, I, you know I, I watch basketball. I watch sports. And, you know, the, the quarterback throws the pass. You know, Brady pulled the trigger on that one. He threw a touchdown pass. How did you get to pull the trigger? It, it's, it's, it's so much a part of us. Uh-huh. And, oh, and I think that mindset is part of the problem. I'm at war with, with, with the, 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 the war against cancer, yeah. the war against you don't have to be at war. Yeah, no, I agree with you. The, those those words, those expressions that are used. I mean, I've been watching that for years. Do you remember back in the day where they, you know, you'd be listening to the traffic report and they'd say there's an accident on I-95. Now, what do they say? There's a crash. Mm-hmm. A crash. They use words that are going to trigger. It's not the same as war, but I think this, the same inference is there that they're using words that are more destructive. A crash is more mm-hmm. definitive and boom, uh, you know, hits you in a different way than an accident. In that same yeah. way, pulling the trigger. The trigger. These are all. Um, I don't know if this would be part of the etymology, but it's, 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 it's uh, our vernacular and how it's warped and how it's used. And yeah. it keeps you in a state of fear. Absolutely. This is Darwinian you know, And theory, the Buddha though. talked about right language. Jesus, talk, Jesus talked about, you know, it's what comes out of a person's mouth and rather than what goes in that defiles them. Um, you know, there's, there are many spiritual traditions that talk about and I don't follow them all the time. I get mad and I curse and cuss or sometimes, but I, I'm more aware than I used to be. But, uh, yeah, you know, you, 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 you choose your words wisely. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a Dr. Fauci was on uh, TV the other day a couple of days ago. He says, you know, we can expect 200,000 more deaths from this virus, but I don't want to be held to that. Then why say it? 
Right. I know. Why where's that coming? Well, let's digress for a minute. Where? I mean, I know they've got modeling and all these sophisticated uh, tools for projection. Whether they're seeing it or not, why do they need to reiterate that over and over again? I think because it's easier to control people, whether they mean to or not. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Remember, he works for Big Pharma, too. Yes, he does. So he's not the, the, the messiah they're making him out to be. He's, he, he, you know, he's telling the truth. Well, that's really low-hanging fruit, isn't it? Because you're supposed to tell the truth. Hmm. We're going to make you a celebrity because you're telling us the truth. <laughs> but this is where we are in celebrity culture. Please don't get me started. Uh-uh. But my point <laughs> being is that why you can say the projector we're projecting many more deaths from this i don't know how many but to get on to get in front of human beings and say you can expect 200,000 more deaths but i don't want to be held to that ray charles can see hey man that's kind of irresponsible <laughs> yeah. if you don't know then don't then say don't it. say it i agree with we're you. already not unless not unless you want to keep you because there's this old mentality that says if I keep them afraid, they'll listen. Hmm. Absolutely. You know, that's the one thing they've held. This has been part of the playbook for perhaps millennia. It only changes with the times in terms of how we live. Let we're we're running out of time. We're doing a fairly short segment today, but I want to, I have to get this in. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask Mr. Ancient Aliens himself <laughs> to comment on this. And we're going to have you back where we can really dig into yeah, this. I'd Obviously, love to. you're 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 there. It, as long as you will honor me with your presence, you're you are invited. I, just let me know. Just let me know what times you have open. Okay, we'll do. But in the meantime, let's yeah. let's finish up this conversation. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, sir. Because there's a whole other dynamic to Reverend Michael Carter that you may or may not know. You probably do, actually, out there, journeyers, because I know you watch Ancient Aliens and beyond. If you now your book, we talked about this, A New World, if you can take it, is derived from that famous Colonel Corso quote mm-hmm. when he heard. Yeah, I, I, I noted what, in the book. I give I give credit where credit's due. I know you did. I know you did. This, for people that don't know, is where he allegedly was having a, a dialogue with one of the, we'll say, visitors when he asked what was on offer for us if we, the people, uh, let the beings into our lives. And the being answered, a new world, if you can take it. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you if you think the beings, whomever and whatever they may be, could be playing some role in this new reality we're living in. What are your thoughts on that? I feel and I think that generally speaking, they are watching how we respond. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's what is it in Star Trek where you don't get involved in the business of lesser developed species or whatever. There's a part of me, I have friends that say if we go too far astray, they're going to come and save us from blowing each other up or whatever. That may happen. I don't know. But I don't think that's the life lesson. I think that you have to, um, to a degree, reap what you sow. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not being punished, but that's just the way of life in this part of the galaxy that uh, uh, what you put out comes back. And so if I jump, I don't even do that with my daughter. There's some things she's going to have to learn. Some of them may be painful. But if I take that lesson away, what do I teach her? That daddy's going to bail me out all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I know people may get upset with the parent-child analogy, and forgive me for it, but a lot of these beings, not all, are we know they're technologically more advanced, and some of them, not all, are quite spiritually more advanced. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm thinking that more or less that we're, we're being observed. How, how are we going to react? How, how are we going to react here? Now, I'm not saying that they may not come and open someone up like they did me or what have you, but that's very different than saying, I'm going to take this lesson away from you. Mm-hmm. Because we have a habit of giving our power away, and next thing you know, we could be worshiping them as gods. Right. Now, some of them would probably like, Okay, we're back, folks. So what else is new? What did we say at the top of the show? When people plan, 
God laughs. Well, God must be having a belly laugh today. So, Michael, continue yeah. where you left off, sir. <laughs> so I, I was just going to say that I think that they're probably observing and maybe tweaking here and there if they need. But I don't think they're going to take this lesson away from us. Um, and I, I, I feel that's, you know, it puts the ball squarely back on us. And I think that's where it belongs that we've created this mess. And um, now it's interesting, my internet is back on. Um, But we've created this mess. And I think we're the ones that are going to have to get out of it. Absolutely. Well said. Perennial. Is this not everything that we're talking about? You know, they say there's nothing new under the sun. That's right. But sometimes we're given a a purview that uh, does feel new, does seem new. Yeah, this seems new for a lot of people. So well, let's it see. Is new. Yeah. yeah, it is new. It, but remember, we said at the top of the show, it could be many perspectives. When I said it's new, it's new for me in this lifetime. I haven't. I don't recall being on a planet during a um, uh, during a pestilence. Now, I happen to believe in reincarnation, so I'm, I'm sure that I probably lived during one. But that I, that's just subjective of me. I, I do know that. Um, you know, there are things I was in New York for 9-11. OK, so there are mm. things I was in. I was there when the lights went out back uh, in, in, in the, the 90s and early 2000s. So, you know, the, nothing to this because this is global. And so was 9-11 in some ways. But, you know, I've been through crises before. It, they change you. They shape you. They inconvenience you. But if you're fortunate enough, you, you can get through it. Mm-hmm. You may get through it. A different as a different person but that's what life is absolutely yeah something has come to me in recent months having to do with change and it, it came i came up with this very short phrase it says if you don't find change change will find you yeah yeah and, that's just that's what that's why the buddhists are so wonderful and pragmatic that life is change yeah. And if you can, you have, you just have to make friends with that. You have to make friends with that. And it's finding, it's found us. <laughs> it's, yeah. if you don't, you refuse to change, I'm going to put something in your path that will make you. <laughs> so yes. here we are. And it was so weird. I, you guys out there, I'm sure all over uh, going to the grocery store. That's about the only place we're able to go these days. And yeah. Michael, I have to tell you, it. I didn't know whether I was going to just cry while I was rolling my cart or laugh because it's so funny seeing all of these people wearing rubber gloves and masks and and other very creative cover-ups, you might say. This is another thing. We're seeing, we're being reminded how brilliantly creative us humans are. Are we not? And it's it's something. These are the beautiful things coming out of it, even in a weird way. No, it is. It is. And, 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 and that's what I think people have to keep in mind, because if you just turn on uh, the media and I'm talking about all of it and I'm pretty progressive in my politics and in my thought, uh, you know, you, you, you still get the same stuff and it's fear, 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 fear. And uh, or, you know, this is not happening. That's not happening. And, you know, there's some things we can do things about and there's some things we can't do anything about. And so, again, to, to complete the circle again, I can respond. That's all I'm responsible for is how I respond and try not to react to the circumstances. I'm not in the White House. Nobody's listening to me. I'm not in the Kremlin. I'm not in, you know, not in Parliament. I, I have no control over that. Mm-hmm. But I do have control over uh, how I, how I uh, you know, walk through the world. Absolutely. Well, that's well said. And we can't hear it enough. So keep keep talking. Speaking of what you, well, you have a church now, but you're not able. I'm I'm assuming you're not holding service, obviously, at this point. No, we, we're doing it virtually. You are. How's that going? It's going well. We we've started it, and uh, you know there were some glitches at the beginning, but it's good. I uh, uh you know we're going to be doing it Easter Sunday. I have oh, to great. be in the pulpit for the next three Sundays. So yeah, we're just going to be doing it through Zoom or Facebook or or both. And uh, people so far have enjoyed it. I, I do my adjunct professor thing until the end of May. And uh, we went from meeting in the classroom to doing it virtually. I'm, I'm getting an, uh, a lesson on how to be more tech savvy, which I can always do. <laughs> I so, think a lot of people are. These yeah, days. yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, life is going on. Uh, my, my daughter is well and 
um, most of the people that I know are, are healthy uh, as far as they don't have the virus. And mm-hmm. so um, I'm fortunate enough that I get paid even when I work from home, mm-hmm. which I'm doing today. So I got a lot to be thankful for. Beautiful. Great. Well, I know there are a lot of people that are going to want to find out more about you who are not aware of you uh, thus far. So let us know where they can find all things Michael Carter, including ancient aliens. I want to talk about that real quick before we close. Okay, real quick. They can go to Michael, Reverend Michael J S Carter dot com. That's my website. Uh, You can go uh, check me out on Facebook, Reverend Michael J S Carter. I have a, uh, a page there called a new world if you can take it. Uh, so Excellent. they can they can check me out there, um, or if you email me at michaeljscarter at gmail dot com, I will respond. I try to respond to everyone as 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 soon as as, as I can. Um, I did uh, I shot some episodes of Ancient Alien. Uh, boy, was it it was towards the end of the year. Was it? Yeah, it was like last September or something like that. Mm-hmm. And one of them have aired. Uh, one of those episodes have aired okay. already. The other ones I heard from one of the producers will not air until the fall. You know how TV is. They're always moving stuff around. Well, now more the than ever. The one that did air was about <laughs> the Pleiades. Mm-hmm. Oh, excellent. Uh, but we also did a, we did a few episodes. The one I liked the best was um, we did an episode on, it was called Forbidden Scriptures. And it was scriptures that referred to possibly star people that were taken out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But those episodes, like I said, will probably not air until the fall, but they're still airing repeats. And yes, so uh, you can always catch me there. There's, there's another show I do called UFOs, the hidden evidence, believe it or not, that's on the, it's on the travel channel. Mm -hmm. I think I'm I'm familiar with it. Somewhat familiar with it. Excellent. Well, let's have some links, shall we? So uh, we got time, right, journeyers? Go check Michael's stuff out. Actually, I saw something on you. You could just do a a YouTube search for that matter, our lovely YouTube channel. And I found a, a sermon that you gave based on the philosophy and life of Martin Luther King Jr. And man, I got to tell you guys, he nailed it. Reverend Rev rev carter you got to go see it maybe i'll put a link to that i don't know when that was filmed but it was just off About the charts three years ago okay at a dr king celebration yeah yeah he was one of my he is one of my one of my uh heroes of course well mm-hmm. he's you know evergreen in so many of our very special yeah. minds. absolutely well you you did that you did that justice the way you delivered that so let me see if i can dig that up and attach that to this show for for everyone. Well, listen, Michael, what a pleasure to finally meet you. And I'm going to give a shout out right now to Crystal. If you're listening, Crystal, thank you for putting us together. Yes, and it's so yes. funny. We know a lot of the same people as you can well imagine. And we're discovering more every day. It's still a small, relatively small community. But I'm so yeah. glad, Crystal. And by the way, I will be reaching out to you. I promise. It's been a little wonky for me on top no, of everything I, I else going on. But I want to say thank you to Crystal uh, for putting I us do together. And, and yeah, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot her an email or a text. What I was going to ask you real quick is if you could send me a link to this so I could send it to people. Absolutely. I yeah. We'll do. We'll do. We'll take care of all that off the air. In the meantime, I'm going to say so long to the journeyers and be well, stay well, and be beautiful. We love you. Take care. Thank you.